Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I'm Firefighter Jeff. I'm a firefighter from Indianapolis. We came today to talk to you about fire and life safety to make sure that you know the things you need to know to keep yourself safe. You might have noticed as you came in, I brought a couple special friends. Did you notice my friends? Yes. Well, let me tell you a little bit about my friends. Both the dogs that you see are girls. They're both black Labrador Retrievers and they have four jobs. Their first job is they're just the family dogs that live at my house. So they like to do things like anyone else's dog. They like to run and play and play ball. On a bright sunny day, you know how the sun comes shining in through the window and it makes a big warm spot on the carpet? They like to find that warm spot and take naps. They don't get to do that very often because we spend most of our days like we are today, teaching young people fire and life safety. The program that you're about to see teaches more than 400,000 young people every year, over 400 programs a year all across the country. We're the only full-time nationally touring fire prevention program in the country. Their second job, they're what we call search and rescue dogs. They're trained to find people who are lost. They do that with their sense of smell. Their sense of smell is 250 million times better than yours and mine. So they can tell the difference between what each one of us smells like, even if we were more than two football fields away. Casey can sit in a boat and smell a drowning victim under 60 feet of water when she's sitting in the boat. So their noses are very sensitive. Their third job, they're what we call therapy dogs. These are the therapy dogs that are used in Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio at burn camp, which are special summer camps for children that have been severely burned. Their fourth job is that they know their fire and life safety skills, the same ones we want you to know. But before we ask them to start work, I should introduce them to you guys. Do you guys want to meet the dogs? Yes! Well, I'm going to start off by introducing you to Casey. She knows she gets introduced first. So this is Casey. Casey is seven years old. As she gets up and moves around, you'll notice that she wears a badge on her collar from the Wayne Township Fire Department. She is considered a firefighter just like I am. Her training started the day that I got her when she was just eight weeks old. And she was trained every single day for three and a half years. At the end of that time is when the fire chief gave her her badge. To give you an idea how much Casey has grown, the day that she was born, she was the size of her nose. Literally the, the, length, the length of the palm of my hand. When she came home to live with me, she was eight weeks old. She weighed 11 pounds and she was the size of her head. I carried her home in the palm of my hand. I've quit doing that. <laughs> Why do you think I quit? She got too big. So at eight weeks, she weighed 11 pounds. And for the next seven months, she gained a half a pound almost every day. So she got up to almost 100 pounds. It's so she got up to almost 100 pounds. Now, I will let you know that I did ask her permission before I discussed her weight in public. <laughs> so this is Casey. Can everyone say hi, Casey? Hi! Casey, can you tell everybody hello? Casey, can you say hi to everyone? Big voice. Say hi. Big voice. Oh, give me your big voice. Good job. Can you wave to everybody? Give them a nice, pretty wave. Give me a big, there's a big wave again. Give me a high five. High five with the other paw. Other paw again. Good job. We'll let her lay back down. Let me introduce you to my other special friend. This is Callie. We spell her name K-A-L-I, and that's short for Calypso. Callie is just three years old. She's a baby. She's a big baby. What do we call baby dogs? A puppy. She's a puppy. She'll be a puppy till she's three and a half, which is about another four months. And since she's still a puppy, when she gets excited, she likes to bark. That's just part of being a puppy. So can everyone say hi, Callie? Hi, Callie. Callie, can you say hello? Good job. Can you wave for me? Give me a nice pretty wave. Let me see your wave. Oh, there's a beautiful wave. High five. Good job. 
So they've been introduced. They're ready to start work. Let's talk about fire safety. Who knows what you should do if your clothes are on fire? What do you do when your clothes are on fire? You stop, drop, and roll. Very good. Everyone say that with me. Stop, drop, and roll. One more time. Stop, drop, and roll. Now when you do that, where do you put your hands? Where do your hands go? Not on the floor. When you, when you stop, drop, and roll, you need to cover your face. There's lots of important things right there. Your eyes, your nose, your mouth. You need to cover those up and you keep, you keep rolling until the fire goes out. You keep rolling until the fire goes out. So if there was a fire over in that corner, should I stop, drop, and roll? Yes. No, you only do that when your clothes are on fire. If the fire's over in the corner, you have a job to do. What is your job? Your job is to get out. Get out and stay out. If it was at home, should you ever go back in the house to get anything? No. What about your favorite toys? Should you go get your toys? No. What about if it was a brand new Sony PlayStation? <laughs> no. no. What about your dog or your cat? Should you go get them? No. What about a brother or sister or mom or dad? Should you go get them? No. no. Whose job is it to go get those things and those people? It's the firefighter's job. If you let the firefighters do their job, your job is to get out and stay out. Once you get out, we want you to go to a place called a meeting place. If you don't know where your meeting place is, when you go home today, ask mom and dad where your meeting place is. It needs to be someplace outside of the house that does not move. A certain tree, a certain neighbor's porch, a certain mailbox. But you wouldn't say we're going to meet next to the car because maybe the car wouldn't be there. So, so a, a certain neighbor's porch, a mailbox, a certain tree, but not something that moves. Now, do you guys know how to pretend? Let's pretend that Casey's clothes are on fire. See if she knows what to do. Casey, your clothes are on fire. Stop. Drop. Roll. Stop. Again. Good job. All right. Now, Casey wants me to remind you that she can't cover her face, but you should always, I know I'm telling them, she's shaking her head to remind me to tell you she can't cover her face, but you should always cover your face and keep rolling until the fire goes out. Good job. Kelly wants to show you that she can do that too. Okay, Kelly, let's see. Stop. Drop. Roll. Good job. All right. Now, when you go to sleep at night, do you sleep with your bedroom door open or closed? Closed. Because what goes to sleep first? Your nose. Your nose is the first thing that goes to sleep and it's the last thing that wakes up. Let's talk about why it's important that you know that. Let's say you're in your bed asleep your bedroom door is open. Now, if you went to sleep last night with your bedroom door open, raise your hand. Quite a few of you. So let's say last night you were in your bed asleep, your bedroom door was open, and your house caught on fire. Fire causes smoke, and if your door is open, that means the smoke can come right in and fill your room up. If you're lying in your bed asleep, which means your nose is asleep, and your room fills up with smoke, are you going to be able to smell that smoke if your nose is asleep? No. You know that most people who die in a fire, it's not the fire that kills them. What do you think it is? It's the smoke. That's why we want you to always sleep with your bedroom door closed to keep the smoke out. We also want to make sure you have something else in your house that smells for smoke and it never goes to sleep. It looks something like this. Does anybody know what these are? A smoke detector. That's right. Smoke alarm or smoke detector that sits up on the ceiling or high on the wall, and it only does one thing. It sits up there all day and all night, and it does this. It sniffs. Now, you know when mom or dad make your favorite supper, how it makes the house smell really good? If this smells that, it doesn't make any noise, except for sometimes when dad's cooking. That's a problem I can't help you with. If it smells mom's perfume or dad's cologne, it doesn't make any noise. But if it's sitting up there and it smells smoke, it starts to make a noise. When you hear that noise, what is your job? To get out. To get out. And? 
Stay out. What's the place called you're going to go to? The meeting place. When you get there, you're going to count noses. So if there's you and a brother, mom, and dad, how many noses should be in your meeting place? Four. What if you had a friend spend the night? There'd be five. So the number of noses in your meeting place should be the same as the number of people at your house at the time of the fire. When you go home today, ask mom and dad when the last time was that they checked your smoke detectors to make sure they work. They should check them once a month. They should change the batteries twice a year. I'll give you an easy way to remember when it's time to change the batteries. Here in Indiana, we change the time on our clocks twice a year. We just did it last weekend. When it's time to change the time on the clocks, it's time to change the batteries and the smoke detectors. That way you won't forget. For all the teachers in the room, if you look at the back of your smoke detectors, there's a manufacturer's date. If that date is more than 10 years old, even if the detector acts like it will work, they can't guarantee that it will actually work in a fire situation. It needs to be replaced. If there is not a manufacturer's date on the back, it's definitely more than 10 years old and needs to be replaced. The only exception to that is the smoke detector that's recently come out called a 10-year smoke alarm. It'll say that clearly on the outside of the box. If you have one of those, you check them once a month and you don't do anything else to them for 10 years. At the end of 10 years, you throw them away and put a new one up. That's the only exception. So let's go back to pretending. We're gonna pretend that Casey and Callie are in their beds asleep. We're gonna pretend this is their bedroom door. If they're in their bed asleep, should the door be open or closed? Closed. Closed, because what goes to sleep first? No. Your nose. So Casey's in her bed asleep. The bedroom door is closed. She hears the smoke detector go off. What does she do before she opens the door? No, before she opens the door, she should feel the door to see if it's what? Hot. Casey, check the door. She's feeling the door. The door's not hot. They open the door and they go out. So let me show you that again because Callie's feeling left out again. Callie's feeling the door. The door's not hot. Can they open it? Yeah, the door's not hot. They can open the door and go out. But Casey and Callie want you to try to know two ways out of every room. Everyone say that. Two ways out. Two ways out. If the door's the first way out, what might be another way out? The window. Our window's usually on the floor. No, so if I want to pretend it's the window, I need to raise it up. So let's see if Casey and Callie know what to do. Okay, girls, this time you check the door, and the door's not up the window because they know how many ways out. Two ways out. Good job. This time Casey feels the door, and the door's not hot. Can she open it? Yes. But this time when she opens the door, she sees smoke. What direction does smoke always go? Smoke always goes up. So if smoke goes up, where's the air you can breathe? Down. Down by the floor. So when you see smoke, you get on the floor and crawl under the smoke. Good job, Casey. Good job. Now, let's pretend that this is a match and a lighter. If you find matches or a lighter laying around, what should you never do? You should never touch them. You should never touch them. Then what should you do? You should go tell a grown-up, whoever's in charge, mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, the babysitter, you should go tell them and have them go get the matches or the lighter and put them away. I want to make sure I'm very clear on this. You don't touch them, which means you don't pick them up and take them to a grown-up. You're not supposed to touch them. You leave them right where they're at. You go tell a grown-up and have the grown-up go get them and put them away. I told you at the beginning that Casey and Callie know their fire and life safety skills. What do you think so far? Have they done a pretty good job? Yeah. So if I show them this match and lighter, what should they not do? Touch not touch them. Then what should they do? They should go tell a grown-up. Well, I'm a grown-up, but they're dogs. What do they tell me? Working? You tell me. Tell me. Good job. Good job. Now, why do we have to know all those things? Why do we have to know how to stop, drop, and roll and check a door to see if it's hot? Casey and Callie want you to know if, that if you don't know fire and life safety skills, you could end up a dead dog. Good job. Now, let's say you're in your bed asleep, you hear the smoke detector go off, you feel the door and the door's hot. Should you open the door? No. no. This time we're going to say you don't have another way out. Maybe you have a window, but it's up too high for you to use. Could be on the second floor or the third floor, even higher. 
Or maybe you don't have a window at all. Some bedrooms have a door but no window. Either way, the door's hot. You don't have any other way out. Should you open the door? No. Does that mean that you're trapped in your room? Yes. Whose job is it to come get you out? The firefighter. When firefighters go to fight fire, are we going to be dressed like I'm dressed right now? No. When we go to fight a fire, we wear special clothes, special pants and boots, a special coat and gloves, a helmet on our head, and a mask on our face so that we can see and breathe, so we look and sound different. If you're trapped in your room, there's a couple things we want you to do and a couple things we want you to not do. Let's talk about the things not to do first. Can you hide from smoke? No. no. Can you hide from fire? No. no. So during a fire, don't ever get into a hiding place. That means you never get under a bed during a fire. You never get into a closet during a fire. Because if you do, the only thing you're hiding from are the people coming to help you. And you want the firefighters to find you and get you out. So we want you to stay down on the floor because that's where the good air is at. Stay as close to the middle of the room as you can without getting under anything. When you hear the firefighters coming, we want you to yell and scream and make as much noise as you can. Because even in the middle of a bright sunny day, it's difficult for the firefighters to see you because of the smoke. But we can hear you just fine. The more noise you make, the quicker and the easier it is for the firefighters to find you and get you out. Let's go through those skills with Casey and Callie one more time. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you what the situation is. You have to tell me what you should do. We'll see if Casey and Callie can remember as well. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Well, let's start off with, what do you do when your clothes are on fire? Stop, 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 drop, and roll. Where do you put your hands? Cover your face and keep rolling until what happens? Until the fire goes out. Casey, your clothes are on fire. Stop, drop, roll. Again, stop, drop, roll. Good job. Callie, can you show them? Can you stop? Drop, roll, let me see, let me see, good job. Watching the two of them do that's like watching football. Casey's the live action, Callie's the slow motion instant replay. If this is Casey and Callie's bedroom door, should the door be open or closed? Closed, because what goes to sleep first? Your nose, good job. So they hear the smoke detector go off. Casey goes over to the door. What is she going to do before she opens it? Feel it. Feel it to see if it's hot. She's feeling the door. The door's not hot. Can she open it? Yeah. Yes. The door's not hot. They can open the door and go out. How many ways out of every room should you try to know? Two ways out. Callie. Callie. Come here. So this time they feel the door and the door is hot. The door's hot. Out the window. Because they know how many ways out? Two ways out. Door's out, out the window. Good job. This time Casey feels the door. The door's not hot. Can she open it? Yes. And when she opens the door, she sees smoke. What direction does smoke always go? Where's the air you can breathe? Down by the floor. So when you see smoke, you need to get down on the floor and crawl under the smoke. Good job. Show me again. Good job. Now let's pretend that Casey and Callie come home from school one day. They find a lighter laying on the kitchen table. What should they never do? They should never touch them. Then what should they do? They should go tell a grown up, why well, I'm a grown up, but they're dogs. How can they tell me? By barking. You can tell me. Tell me. Good job. Why do we have to know up know all those things? What'll happen if we don't know what to do? Let me see, Callie. Show me. So there ended up a dead dog. Good job. You guys named all those. Good job. Kind of makes you wonder who trained who. Now, at the beginning of the program, I told you that Casey and Callie were fire and life safety dogs, which means that we teach more than just fire safety. So we have one more message to talk to you about. It's about petting dogs that you don't know. Let's say you're out playing in the yard and a dog comes up to you that you don't know and they're wagging their tail. Is it okay to reach out and pet that dog? No. No. What does it mean when a dog wags their tail? It means they're excited. They could be happy. They could be afraid, scared, angry. It's all going to look the same. It's just a dog wagging their tail. If that dog is afraid, scared, or angry, you reach out to pet them, they could bite you. Before you pet a dog that you don't know, you must always ask the owner if it's okay. If the owner's not with the dog, what's the answer? 
The answer is no, you leave that dog alone. But if the owner gives you permission, then you can walk up to the dog slowly from the front. It's very important that the dog sees you coming. You don't want to surprise him. You're going to hold your hand with your fingers and thumb tucked underneath. So if I wanted to pet Casey, do you think she can smell my hand from over here? She sure can. Remember, she can tell what we smell like from two football fields away. So this is plenty close enough for me to make sure that she's comfortable with me being this close. If the dog starts to growl or bark or back away, they're telling you the answer is no. Even if the owner says yes, the dog can still tell you no. But if the dog stays nice and relaxed, the next thing I can do is reach out to pet her. Does Casey look nice and relaxed? Yes. Yeah, I don't think she could be more relaxed and still be breathing. So the next thing I can do is reach out to pet her. Listen to the word I use there very carefully. I said you can pet the dog. I did not say you can pat the dog. So a nice, gentle touch is fine. This is okay. This is not okay. To the dog, that might feel like you're hitting them. And if the dog's already a little afraid, it might cause them to bite you. The last thing is, is when you're petting a dog that you don't know, you don't put your face down by their face. Because if the dog were to decide to snap at you, your face is the closest thing. That's what they're going to get a hold of. The reason I tell you that is because here in just a minute, at the end of the program, we're going to give you a chance to pet the dog. Now, if you don't want to, you can say no thank you and walk right by. You don't have to, but it'll be your chance to do that. But before we do that, do you want to see him do one more trick? Yes. Now, this, this trick is very difficult for the puppy to do, but we'll see if we can get her to do it as well. I'm going to take a treat, and I'm going to put one on Casey's paw, and I'm going to put one on Callie's paw. Why aren't they eating their treats? That's why she's a pup. If you notice, not only is Casey not eating it, she's not even looking at it. She's not eating it because I haven't given her permission. She, what is she looking at? She's looking at me because where's permission going to come from? It's going to come from me. She could stare at the treat all day long. The treat won't give her permission to eat it. Callie hasn't figured that out yet. Now, those of you that are on this side, if you look at Casey's face, you can tell that I have her undivided attention. That should be the look on your face when your teachers are talking to you. Undivided attention. Okay. All right. Now, of all the different tricks the dogs have done for you today, which one of the tricks do you think was the most difficult to teach them? Actually, that one was not the most difficult. The hardest trick to teach them was crawling. When they were crawling, what were they crawling under? We were pretending there was smoke there, but there wasn't anything there. That makes that trick very difficult because it doesn't make sense to them to crawl for no reason. So that makes that trick difficult to teach. Now when you go home today, you're going to ask mom and dad when the last time was that they checked your smoke detectors, when the last time was that they changed the batteries. If they don't remember, it's been too long. Also, if you don't know where your meeting place is, you need to, when you ask mom and dad where your meeting place is, remember it needs to be someplace outside of the house that does not move. A certain tree, a certain neighbor's porch, a certain mailbox, but not something that moves like a car because it might not be there. All right, now here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn this back over to your teachers. When they give you permission, you can walk up and pet the dogs. This is how that's gonna work. When it's your turn, you have to walk up to the dogs from the front. Whichever dog you wanna pet, you let that dog smell your hand, and then you can pet them. As you walk up to them, watch your steps. Make sure you don't step on paws and tails and noses. Does everyone understand? Yeah. All right. Teachers, I will turn it back over to you. I'm going to get the, bring the dogs back a little bit so you guys have a little bit more room. So teachers.